It's space weather! Looking at the sun in 304 angstroms, you got filamentary activity on the western limb and the northeastern limb. Large coronal hole rotating past the earth-facing zone. And a large north pole coronal hole remains in effect. We got extremely low activity, low solar wind speed, and some odd data. 193 angstroms, you can see that coronal hole, which is gigantic. It actually sp spreading over the, uh, over the equator there into the southern portion of the sun. We can also see some holes in the corona rotating in, so not going to have any drought of coronal holes anytime soon, that's for sure. Let's look at the magnetic lines, which are totally anomalous. So that's not telling us much. If anybody understands how, how these anomalies happen, we've, we've gotten these before. If anybody understands how this works, please put it in the comments. Let's look at the real-time solar wind. We're going to find that it's quite low. There's a small density uptick. Please load. All right, so the BTBZ is just a little bit above zero there. Phi angle is at 272. Now, that's I think that's the influence of that North Pole coronal hole. It's very large. I'm going to go back and look at the magnetic lines again. Hopefully, they'll, hopefully they'll, those anomalies will be gone. 8.92 protons per cubic centimeter is the solar wind density. 350 kilometers per second. So it's a it's basically a weak coronal hole wind stream is what we're seeing. Had a had a bit of a lull in the earthquakes, although I did notice that yesterday uh, California did receive a four point one. Look at the last eight hours here. Greece is still rocking. Venezuela got a four point five. Mexico got a 4.1, Indonesia 4.5. We got another Fijian ultra deep earthquake at a 4.5 magnitude. 4.1 in Kodiak. Another antipode type earthquake in Greece. Again, for those of you who are not aware, uh, the area around Greece is the antipode of Fiji. And many folks believe that Deep earthquakes on the one side of the planet can cause normal earthquakes on the other side. Looking at spaceweathernews.com, no surprises here. The x-ray flux is still flatlined. There's your magnetometer data. No forecast on that. KP index is at 2. Electron flux remaining incredibly low, dipping below 10 to the second on the high energy. Sorry, on, on the high density and uh, still flatlining. I mean, ultra low, ultra low electron flux. The F2 ionosphere is looking pretty anomalous in the northern hemisphere. You can see uh, very low, see all that red, very low uh, one megahertz areas in the F2 ionosphere and a large disparity between that uh, and those 11 megahertz charged areas, especially like right in this area. Moving on, let's go back to the SDO and see if some of that data has been brushed up. Let's try, try the 171 angstroms view again. Nope, that data is still jacked up. Because <laughs> the sun's magnetic lines certainly do not look like that. Uh, or we would notice it on the GOES magnetometer, wouldn't we? All right. So, 
Solar activity very low. Let's go into random, random facts. What are we looking at? Well, that's a Chandra image, which is an X-ray telescope. And that is an image of a pretty famous object, Cygnus X1. Yeah, headed back to Cygnus again. Now, somehow this got screwed up. The circle has moved to a spot where it does not belong. That is very odd. Anyway, we're unsure why this circle... See this red circle here? I don't know how it got moved over there. <laughs> That's not where X1 is located. <laughs> X1 is actually located here. So, in any case, maybe somebody edited the article just within the last five minutes since we looked at it. Anyway, Cygnus X1 is an interesting galactic X-ray source, and uh, it's the first such source widely accepted to be a black hole. Now, whether black holes are real or not is another debate. But the point is, another crazy object in the constellation of Cygnus, this one was discovered by a rocket. And uh, weren't exactly sure where the X-ray source came from, so another, uh, another pair of rockets, rockets were launched, and those contained Geiger counters, and that's how we figured out where this was located. Uh, we're going to have links to the... Uh, Links to articles about X1, or at least this Wikipedia article. And it's a pretty famous X-ray source, radio source, whatever you want to call it. And uh, it became the subject of a bet between Stephen Hawking and Kip Thorne, uh, where Hawking bet him that it was not a black hole, and Kip Thorne bet that it was. And in 1990, Hawking uh, conceded the bet agreeing that it is a black hole. Again, we're not going to talk about whether or not we believe black holes are a thing. Uh, but yeah, there's your random space fact. Thanks for tuning in. Please uh, don't forget to like and subscribe the videos. Share with your friends on social media, etc. More updates daily. And let's close things out by looking at the western limb in 304 angstroms. Now remember, when you're looking at anomalous data, don't drink. And if you drink, well, don't freak out about anomalous data. <laughs>